Okay. So that's you and him on FaceTime. Is he showing you that picture? And there's Romeo. So yeah. Let me. So he has two phones, right? What the fuck? <laughs> Bro, you're going to jail! Now, I know on the channel that we've been talking about a ton of OG YouTubers that misuse their platforms to interact with the young fans. And even though that can be depressing for the fans of that content creator, I think it's something that we have to speak about. These content creators either grew too quickly and had no clue on how to handle the fame, so they misuse their platform, or they get a sense of entitlement with the subscribers that they had, making them become more power hungry. Today, we are talking about Romeo Lacoste, a content creator that used his platform of over 1 million subscribers at the time of the controversy to interact with young fans in a negative way. Romeo Lacoste was once a huge tattoo artist on YouTube that would tattoo a handful of notable celebrities like Justin Bieber and Ariana Grande, and YouTube content creators like Tyler Oakley, Faze Banks, and Ricegum. But in March of 2019, Romeo's world would fall apart right in front of his eyes. Romeo Lacoste would be exposed on Twitter for grooming young fangirls that made a group chat dedicated to him back in 2016. Now this all came to light during the same time there was a controversy happening with Shane Dawson, which made this story not as well known even after Keemstar covered the situation on Drama Alert. Jay Aubrey would cover Romeo Lacoste in a video titled The Shattered Legacy of Romeo Lacoste, but other than that, there really hasn't been a rise and fall video, and that's where I come in. But before we even continue, I have to give a big thank you to the sponsor of today's video, Surfshark. Surfshark is a VPN which stands for Virtual Private Network that can be downloaded as an app on your phone or added to your browser as an extension. By downloading Surfshark, it will keep your information safe and encrypted, making you feel even more comfortable while shopping online or even doing the bare minimum like surfing the web. With Surfshark, you can virtually be anywhere in the world by just simply turning on the VPN and changing your location. This is useful for deals online that aren't in your area, and also if your favorite show like The Office is taking off the US version of Netflix, which I'm still pretty upset about. All I had to do was turn on the VPN and put my location to Canada, and boom, I can continue to binge watch my favorite show. With Surfshark, you could use public Wi-Fi without the fear of your personal data being exposed or being hacked. Surfshark will encrypt your data, making you virtually invisible. Keep yourself and loved ones safe with one subscription that will cover an unlimited number of devices. Again, that's one subscription that will cover every device that you have. Don't let your current location limit you with online deals and shows that may be blocked in your area. Use code BILLS at checkout to get 83% off and 4 extra months for free. Again, this video wouldn't be possible without Surfshark, so make sure to try it out with the link in the top of my description or from my pinned comment down below. Now, as you know, if you've been on my channel for more than a couple of days, we have to take a deep dive into the beginning of his channel, where he started from and what has happened to him after he got exposed. Romeo Lacoste would create his channel all the way back in April. 2009 but he wouldn't upload his first video until December of 2011, where he would tattoo for a band called We Came As Romans. Now, a lot of Romeo's older videos would basically be him tattooing for tattoo parties and recording the events. But these were big celebrities that he would be tattooing, which gave him some much needed notoriety as he was coming up on YouTube. His upload schedule was extremely inconsistent at the time, and his average upload pattern was one upload about every two months. Romeo Lacoste would hit it big when he would be invited to be a contestant on season three of the best ink personally i never heard of the show and when i looked for it online people said it was a great show but it would be canceled right after the third season so really how good of a show was it romeo lacoste would do okay with his time on best ink making it to sixth place before being eliminated off the show but this only helped him grow his audience in just a short amount of time romeo lacoste would build his clientele and would start to tattoo bigger celebrities and content creators he would eventually find out that justin bieber wanted to be tattooed by him and that would be one of his first, if not the first big celebrity to get tattooed from Romeo Lacoste. Now again, with his newfound popularity, Romeo's channel would pick up in steam. From 2015 to 2017, Romeo would switch up his content a lot to where we would get more of a personality out of him than just videos of him speed drawing on a canvas. Throughout that time, he would also open his tattoo parlor in LA and he would become more active with uploading on YouTube. Eventually, all of his hard work would pay off when he would achieve 500,000 subscribers in June of 2017. Romeo Lacoste would upload this video, sharing his experience as a tattoo artist, and he seemed absolutely grateful to have a community that supported him. He would also mention how he would get followed by Drake on Instagram, and how eventually he thought it would be cool to tattoo him. Hello everyone, it's Romeo Lacoste, and welcome to another one of my YouTube videos. Guys, today is a very, very, very special day. 
This is a very special YouTube video. I am celebrating reaching 500,000 subscribers, half of a million subscribers, guys, and it's all thanks to you. Thank you all so much. I'm celebrating it. It's absolutely awesome. Never did I think I would ever reach half a million subscribers. I started my YouTube channel about a year and a half ago, and I remember thinking 100,000 was a lot. But guys, thanks to you and everyone who subscribed to my channel, I've reached 500,000 subscribers, and I appreciate you all so much. I just wanna say thank you to all of you who subscribe to me and watch my YouTube videos. It means absolutely so much to me. I know that you know tons of you guys follow me on Instagram. So many people follow me on Instagram. But for me, I put so much more effort and time into my YouTube videos. And also, I understand that like there's a lot of YouTubers out there, you know, and I'm known for my tattoos. So for you guys to, have, to watch my YouTube videos and to enjoy them means so much to me, and I appreciate you guys all so much. So thank you, thank you, thank you all from the bottom of my heart. Eventually, Romeo Lacoste would get his own game show called Tattoo Roulette, where contestants on the show would be put through some tough challenges, and if they completed the challenge, they would get a free tattoo. This show was produced by Disney and uploaded to his channel, and at this moment, we saw that Romeo Lacoste's reach was beyond YouTube. Now, from 2017 to 2019, Romeo Lacoste would tattoo a bunch of high-profile internet celebrities. He would tattoo Ricegum, Wolfie, KSI, James Charles, and Austin McBroom from the Ace Family. This skyrocketed Romeo Lacoste's subscriber count and notoriety. His popularity would grow so much that he would eventually tattoo Kendrick Lamar in July of 2018. Just as quickly as Romeo Lacoste was growing, there would be a storm approaching from a distance, a storm that he couldn't have prepared for. In 2019, Romeo Lacoste would hit 1 million subscribers in January, right at the beginning of the new year. He would also upload his third most viewed video titled 5 Most Painful Tattoos. And that would be the last video that his fans would receive for a while. Remember when I told you about the storm that was approaching from a distance? Well, at this point, the storm was right over Romeo Lacoste. In March of 2019, a user by the name of Yellow Chair on Twitter would post DMs from their group chat called Romeo's Fruit Cups. Yellow Chair said that the way Romeo Lacoste talked to her and the other girl that was in the group chat was strange and seemed off, kind of like he was flirting with them. So they both devised a plan to where they would low key flirt back just to see how far he would escalate the situation and she said it wouldn't take much for Romeo to start to flirt back with them. Eventually, he would ask them to make a dirty group chat where Romeo Lacoste would send pictures of him grabbing his meat and talking to these girls inappropriately. Remember, they were underage. Now, Romeo Lacoste knew their age, and he knew that they were underage, with one of the girls being 15 and the other one being 14, but he just didn't care. At this point, Romeo Lacoste's ego was through the roof, so to him, their ages didn't matter. Eventually, Romeo Lacoste would DM Yellow Chair separately, telling her that he would get her drunk and how he liked to get his butthole licked. Yes, his butthole licked, as weirdly as that is. And how he would give her a shot of nut and alcohol and would then boast about the length of his meat. Remember again, this was a underage fan, not somebody that he knew or interacted with on a regular basis. She would eventually block him. She stated that she was always too afraid to come out with the screenshots, but once she got older, I'm assuming she felt like she had to. After these screenshots were shared on Twitter, Romeo's ex-girlfriend would write on Twitter that she was disgusted with the screenshots that came out against Romeo Lacoste, but that she wasn't at all surprised. She stated that Romeo Lacoste was always a pedo and how they started dating when she was just 14 years old and he was 19, and how on the very first date, he made sexual advances onto her. She would talk about how he was manipulative and mentally and emotionally drained. Here are some screenshots, pause if you want to read more in depth, that's just the basis of everything that happened. This story would catch the eye of Keemstar, and on the very same day, he would set up his camera and have an interview with Romeo Lacoste. Here's parts of the interview. And I did not have any kind of physical communication with any of these girls. These girls, in my opinion, and I don't want to just like try to defend myself, but I almost feel like I was sort of taken advantage of in a sense because it's like... I didn't have a whole lot of followers. They, you know, reached out to me saying sexual stuff. They lied about- But the thing it, is, but the thing is, is like at the time you were like 27 or 28 years old, all right? If this girl says I'm almost 18 and sh and you know she's, she's not telling you that she's legal and you pursue her sexually, you're in the wrong. I mean, you're the adult. You're the, you're the adult, man. You know, and th now they're coming out saying they were 15 to 14 at the time. Bro, no, you're right. This interview showed just how twisted Romeo Lacoste was mentally. This dude 
said that they came onto him like he was a victim in the situation when he was damn near 15 years older than them. Now, right after this interview with Keemstar, cops would show up at Romeo Lacoste's tattoo parlor in LA, but there was no sign of Romeo. It was later discovered that he took a convenient trip to Mexico. Air quotes, of course, on convenient. Upon his arrival back to the United States, he would turn off his comments on all of the videos and take about six months off of YouTube. His first video back would be in September of 2019 and it would be a one minute and 20 second long tattoo video. I think with his time off, he thought he would come back and everyone may have forgot the allegations against him. But with his videos gaining just a fraction of the views he once received, he would once again disappear off of YouTube. Now, in February of 2020, Romeo Lacoste would again be exposed for texting a 15 year old girl, saying that he would be down to link up with her if he ever went to Florida and a bunch of other things. Here's parts of Rapzilla's video explaining the whole situation in depth. She says, just got broken up with slant face. Oh, why? What happened? Do you have snap? Tell me your snap. Romeo Lacoste. So he's really adamant about getting that snap. She said, okay, I'll add you now. What's yours? Uh, and then he does not want to text through his verified account. He wants to get her on Snapchat because clearly Snapchat messages disappear. Here he can be seen saying, we could hang out. She's obviously very uh, excited about this because the power dynamic is on another level. This is a celebrity tattoo artist, and it would be exciting uh, to any young female that is 15 years old, anybody in general. This is just insane. Oh, wow, that's really cool. I've actually never been in Jacksonville, though. I've never been there and also never been to L.A. He says, ha ha ha, well, if I'm ever in Tampa, she says, yeah, if you ever are, definitely let me know. We can link and you can help me decide what kind of tattoo would fit me. He says, I'm down. And then this is when the flirtation starts to begin right here, but it escalates pretty quickly. The, the thing about this that gets me is that he knows that she's 15 years old. Okay. So that's you and him on FaceTime. Is he showing you that picture? And there's Romeo. So yeah. let me, so he has two phones, right? What the fuck? Bro, you're going to jail. Now, after Keemstar would cover this news story, Keemstar would receive a cease and desist letter from Romeo Lacoste's attorneys, claiming that the videos that Keemstar did on him only showed the negative side of the situation and painted Romeo Lacoste in a negative light. Even though Romeo didn't deny the allegations against him and admitted to a lot of the truth that came out. Even in the newest case from February of 2020, Romeo would be caught on FaceTime with this girl, which is enough evidence for me at least to acknowledge that he was having conversations with her to a point where he would be comfortable enough to FaceTime her. Keemstar would ignore the cease and desist and would be taken to court for defamation of character. Romeo Lacoste would try to sue Keemstar for $3.5 million. Now, not only would the judge rule in Keemstar's favor, but Keemstar would counter sue for $140,000 and would win the lawsuit. Keemstar and Romeo Lacoste would settle on a price of $115,000. And in this video uploaded from Keemstar, he would take Romeo Lacoste's 1 million subscriber plaque. Just watch parts of this masterpiece. I promise you won't regret it. But I also needed something else in this settlement, something that is so important to me. I feel if content creators or YouTubers uh, get exposed for this type of thing, and it's 100% proven that they should be stripped uh, uh, of being a creator, of being a YouTuber, this is a privilege. I needed something that sent a strong message to stop trying to silence uh, the media that, that are doing fair coverage. Stop trying to silence other YouTubers uh, that are giving you legit criticism. I needed something for myself and something for my fans that support me. Ladies and gentlemen, it all boils down to what's in this box. So without further ado, this is our trophy. This is our championship. This is ours. We won. Now, what happened to Romeo Lacoste after being exposed a second time and losing in his court battle against Keemstar? Well, he would take on a new persona as a singer and would start to produce music, with his first music video being released in November of 2020 to his YouTube channel. Now, I can't play the song, but I listened to it and it's absolute trash. 
At this point, I kind of think that Zoe Berger is his ghostwriter, and he just has her in the studio just writing down a bunch of verses for him. He would also make a conscious decision to make a TikTok account. I, I mean, I'll say it again, a TikTok account that has a bunch of kids on the app where he would upload thirst traps. This account has over 350,000 followers, and it would be verified. Sadly, with the mass cease and desist letters that were sent out, the majority of news outlets would delete their articles written about him, and he would go on to continue tattooing high-profile celebrities, which is awful, but again, it might not be their fault because you can't really find a negative article written on Romeo Lacoste unless you're on YouTube. Sadly, even though his YouTube career died, he still has yet to be arrested or charged, and he still makes a bunch of money tattooing clients. Romeo Lacoste is a perfect example of someone who became ego-driven to make bad decisions even though he already dated young girls in the past, his popularity made it a lot easier to connect with young fangirls who didn't know any better. Romeo Lacoste would hit 1 million subscribers in January of 2019, but his current subscriber count is 894,000 subscribers. This has been the rise and fall of Romeo Lacoste. If you made it this far, I wanted to say thank you so much for all the constant support on the channel. We are about to hit 50,000 subscribers before the end of the year, and at this time last year, I would never expected to be at this point in my YouTube career. You all changed my life, and I cannot thank you enough. On the screen right now is the donations I made to Team C's, and I know it's not that much, but that donation will only grow in the future with more causes. Saving the planet is much bigger than me or my YouTube channel, and I want to use my platform to make a change in the world. But again, thank you for everything. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next video.